What up? It's Snowflake. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to do a QuickTime conversion export in Final Cut Pro 7. The reason why I do this is to create a smaller file size uh, and smaller dimensions that I can put online and that can be easily viewed on a website somewhere or sometimes if the file is small enough, uh, attach it to an email. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is I'm getting an approval for a lower third that I've created. I'll just show this to you. How many of you are excited? For what? I'm excited, Brendan. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to do QuickTime conversion. So instead of doing just a straight QuickTime, which will create a larger file based on the codec that I'm using in my sequence, I'm just going to do a QuickTime conversion. So you do control click or right click, depending on the mouse you're using, and you do export using QuickTime conversion. You're going to come over here and you're going to export to the, select the location that you'd like to export to. Uh, I'm going to make this lower third sample B. And in the down here in the format, it's QuickTime Movie, and I'm going to do Options. Now, I've already gone in here and changed this around, but I'm going to show you what it was before and what I changed it to. Uh, in the Settings tab, we're going to go in here and change the quality. Well, actually, the quality I'm going to leave on high. It's the encoding that I'm going to change. And it usually is at set to Best Quality, which is a multi-pass. Uh, I change it to Faster Encode, which is a single pass. And that is actually, there's no pixelation. It looks good and it's perfect for review because it creates a smaller file. The file size is smaller so that it's easily viewable online and sometimes I can attach it to an email. Hit OK. Don't have to worry about filter. Um, the size uh, is usually compressor native but I change it to custom and I change it to custom so that I can change the dimensions to the 640 by, I'll just retype that in there for you so you can see that, by 360. Okay? Um, and that also creates a smaller dimension window that can be easily viewed online from any different type of computer, uh, mobile device, or I can also attach it to an email. Okay, hit OK, and then I'm gonna go into the sound settings, and this is usually on linear PCM. I change it to AAC, and I change the rate to 44.1. Um, sometimes I'll change the bit rate on the audio, but I'm just gonna leave it at 128 because it's only a 15 second clip. It's not gonna be that big of a file. So hit OK, and I, I want to note that in the settings, you can, this can be um, changed, but I, I never change it because this is why I use QuickTime Conversion, is the compression type is H.264. Um, so that creates, that, that's why it creates this smaller sized file, as opposed to just doing a straight QuickTime export. Yeah, you can go in there and mess around with the codec, but it's going to use natively whatever you've been using in your sequence. And that, for me, is ProRes, and that's going to create a huge file, and I want it to be much smaller. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit Save. And that'll... It doesn't take too long. It depends on the length of the, of the sequence that you're working with. Of course, it's only 15 seconds, so it should only take 15 seconds or so. Go on the Finder here, and you'll see it's going to come up as lower third sample B. All right, go over here. The file is only 3.3 meg, so I can attach that to an email, which is perfect. Um, and it looks like this. How many of you are excited? Yeah. Who is it for what? <laughs> looks good to me. Uh, I can attach that to an email, and I can get approval from the client on the lower third. So if this video was helpful, um, if you think this will benefit you in any way, please comment like the video, and subscribe to my channel for future tutorials and tips on Final Cut Pro, Motion, and Compressor. Thank you very much.